Hi and welcome to another video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to look at the topic of algebra. So as always, I have three questions for you to solve. What you can do is you can pause the video, have a look at the questions that we have and then have a look at the solution that will follow. Now, because the questions are slightly longer than usual, I have spread these questions across two slides. So what I will do is I'll just stay on one slide for around five seconds, stay on another slide for another five seconds and then we will have a look at the solutions. The ideal time frame to solve these three questions is going to be four minutes. If you are able to solve it before that, brilliant stuff. You will probably do well in the quant section of the CD at the very least. So give yourself a pat on the back. But if you are taking longer, you might have to understand basic question types in algebra. So without further ado, I will show you the questions now. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the i button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. Now if you look at the first question that we have here, Ravi purchased some pencils, erasers, sharpeners and so on. So we have a lot of data that has been given to us. People who don't really look at the entire question or are not suspicious enough of the paper setter will try to solve three the three equations simultaneously and then they will try to come up with the answer. Now that is not a healthy thing that, that needs to be done because there is one thing that should make you even more suspicious. One, obviously the question is too long. It has no place in a, in a CET, right? Because you are expected to solve a lot of questions in a lot less time. So you should not have these kind of questions at the CET, logically speaking, right? But if you look at the last part of the question, that is basically a good giveaway. What is the last part? We have to find the cost of three pencils, three erasers and three sharpeners. Now, if you have not been asked the price of every pencil, every eraser and every sharpener, why is it that you are trying to figure out the price of every pencil, every eraser and every sharpener? Doesn't make sense, right? So, what you have to find is the price of the combination. So, try to think in terms of the combination itself. So, let's try this question first and see what exactly do we get. Now, if you assume that the price of each pencil is P rupees, the price of each eraser is E rupees and the price of each sharpener is S rupees, then what do you get? The cost of three pencils, so 3p plus two erasers is 21. We also know that the cost of four sharpeners, so 4s plus three erasers, 4s plus 3e is 25. We can also see that if you purchased two pencils, so 2p plus one sharpener, you would have spent 14. What do we have to find out? What is the cost of three pencils plus three erasers plus three sharpeners? That's what we have to find out. Now, if you look at the data that has been given to you, we have accounted for three pencils here. We have accounted for two pencils here, total of five pencils. If you look at it together, if you look at erasers, two erasers, three erasers, five erasers, sharpeners, four sharpeners, one sharpener, five sharpeners. So if you combine all three, you will get five pencils plus five erasers plus five sharpeners is equal to 21 plus 25, 46 plus 14, that is 60. So if Ravi had to purchase five pencils, five erasers and five sharpeners, he would have to spend 60 rupees totally. Now the question is how much money will he take or will he require to buy three pencils, three erasers, three sharpeners? Extremely easy question. The answer is basically three fifths of 60. You can include one intermediate step. You can see that P plus E plus S is 12. If P plus E plus S is 12, then 3 times P plus 3 times E plus 3 times S is going to be 12 into 3, that is 36. So the correct answer here is going to be option D, that is rupees 36. Now this is a slightly difficult question because there is a lot of information given here. But again, if you are looking at it in the overall context, it's not a difficult question. What you have to do is you have to save time in other questions so that you can use that extra time in questions like this. Now, what we have to understand here is we have to solve it the normal conventional way because we don't really have any insights as such. So what we can do here is we can just write the names here. So we have Kunal, we have Khushi and we have the three sons, Ram, Balram and Shah. We know that the ages of the three sons are in an increasing AP. So just for the sake of simplicity, I will say that let the age of Ram be A years the age of Balram will be A plus D years, doesn't matter. The age of Sham will be A plus 2D years. You can also say that the age of Balram is A, A minus D, A plus D, it's perfectly okay. You can use it in this manner as well. 
So I'll just continue with this, wherein Ram's age is A, Balram is A plus D and Sham is A plus 2D. Now what we have been given here is, 10 years ago the age of Balram was twice Ram's age and we have to assume that it's back then. So 10 years ago what was the age of Balram? The age of Balram today is A plus D. So 10 years ago his age should have been A plus D minus 10. 10 years ago his age was twice that of Ram's age. So what was Ram's age 10 years, 10 years ago? A minus 10. So what are we going to get? A plus D minus 10 is to A minus 20. So I'll just write it. A plus D minus 10 will be 2A minus 20. You can just simplify this particular equation to get it in the form of A and D on one side itself. So 2A minus A will be A. D will come to this side and will become minus D. This will be equal to minus 10 plus 20 that is plus 10. So A minus D is 10 is the first equation that we have. Now if you look at the second part of the information, 2 years hence, so 2 years after this, thrice Ram's age. So what will be Ram's age after 2 years? It will be A plus 2. So 3 times Ram's age will be twice that of Sham's age. What is Sham's age today? A plus 2D. So this will be nothing but twice Sham's age. A plus 2D plus 2 after 2 years. So again if you simplify this, you will get 3A plus 6 equals 2A plus 4D plus 4. And if you just shuffle the terms, you are going to get 4D as it is. So I will just write 4D as it is here. 2a minus 3a will become minus a equals 6 minus 4 that is going to be 2. Now we have a plus a in the first equation and a minus a in the second equation. If you add the two a's will get cancelled out. So 4d minus d will become 3d equals 12 or you are going to get d equals 4. Now if d is equal to 4, if you just put it in one of these equations, you are going to get if d is 4 then a will be equal to 14. That is what you are going to get. Now we get the ages of Ram as 14, the age of Balram as 14 plus 4 or 18 and that of Sham as 18 plus another 4 that is 22 years. So that those are the present ages of Ram, Balram and Sham. What we have to do is we also have to figure out what is happening in terms of Kunal and Khushi. So Khushi's age was thrice that of Sham's age 3 years ago. 3 years ago what was Sham's age? 3 years ago Sham's age was 19 years because today Sham's age is 22. Khushi's age was thrice that of Sham's age 3 years ago. So if Sham was 19 years old 3 years ago, Khushi should have been 19 into 3 that is 57 years old 3 years ago. If Khushi was 57 years old 3 years ago, today Khushi should be 60 year old. Now we have to figure out what is the age of Kunal as of today or we have to find the age of Kunal when Balram was born. So today's age if you look at it, the present total age of the family members is 178 years out of which 14, 18, 22 are the ages of the three sons, 60 is the age of Kushi. So what is this cumulatively? 14 plus 18 plus 22 you can say is nothing but 18 into 3 that is 54, 54 plus 60 is 114 out of 178, 114 has been accounted by the remaining four members. So what is Kunal's age as of today? 178 minus 114 which is going to be 64 years. So Kunal's age as of today is 64 years. So what was his age when Balram was born is very important because there is a 64 in the option as well. It is very easy for you to mark 64 and go ahead in a hurry. But we have to find the age of Kunal when Balram was born. Balram is 18 years old today. So Kunal's age 18 years ago was 64 minus 18 which will be 46 years. So the correct answer here is option D that is 46 years. Now this is a data sufficiency question and data sufficiency questions are generally slightly tricky. So in this context as well, we know that alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic equation, some quadratic equation. We have to find out what is the quadratic equation. So the roots are given to you, you have to find the equation in the first place. Now if you know this basic form of a quadratic equation when the sum of the roots and the product of the roots are known to you then you should be able to sail through this question. So the general form is x square minus sum of roots into x plus product of roots equal to 0. This is going to be the general form of the equation. For that you should uniquely know the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. So in this context if you look at the first option or the first statement that we have here sum of the roots is minus 4. And the second expression says alpha by beta plus beta by alpha is 6 by 5. Or in other words, if you just cross multiply, you will get alpha square plus beta square upon alpha beta equals 6 by 5. 
that is what you are going to get. We know that alpha plus beta is minus 4, that is what we know. So, what we can do in this context is, we can simply square it, we can say that alpha square plus 2 alpha beta plus beta square will be minus 4 square or 16. So, we know that alpha square plus beta square is 16 minus 2 alpha beta. So, I will just write it, alpha square plus beta square is 16 minus 2 times alpha beta, that is what we get. Now, if you just substitute this with the numerator that we have here, we will get 16 minus 2 alpha beta upon alpha beta equals 6 by 5. Now, if you shuffle a bit, you will get the value of alpha beta. Now, the beauty of data sufficiency questions is that you need not find what the answer is. You just have to figure out whether the question can be answered or not. So, I will not get into solving the question. I know that I will get something in the form of alpha beta here. Right? It could be a fraction, it could be an integer, it could be positive, negative, whatever, does not matter. So, alpha beta is something that we can find out easily. We also knew the value of alpha plus beta. So, can we figure out the quadratic equation? Definitely yes. So, statement 1 can be used alone to find the answer to this question. Now, let us look at statement number 2 and we are not supposed to carry forward the information from statement 1 into statement 2. So, be careful when you are doing this. In the second statement, we know that alpha into beta is 5 and alpha square plus beta square is 6. So, if I want to find out alpha plus beta because alpha into beta is already known, I can say that alpha plus beta the whole square let us say is alpha square plus 2 alpha beta plus beta square. That is what we are going to get. I know the value of alpha square plus beta square as 6. So, this will be nothing but 6 plus 2 into alpha beta or 2 into 5 that is 10. So, I get alpha plus beta the whole square equals 16. The value of alpha plus beta in this case will be plus or minus 4. So, we will write it as plus or minus 4 in this context. Now, because the value of alpha plus beta is not known uniquely to us, we will not be able to find the quadratic equation in the first place. That is why statement 2 stand alone is not going to be sufficient to give us the correct quadratic equation. So, only statement 1 is relevant and only statement 1 is sufficient to answer this particular question. So, the correct answer here is going to be option 1, wherein statement 1 alone is sufficient to answer this particular question. So, I hope you have had an understanding of how to solve questions that are based on algebra. In many cases, the questions are going to be straightforward and you are going to apply the basic rules of linear and quadratic equations when it comes to these particular questions. I hope you will be able to apply whatever your learnings are in the upcoming tests and in the upcoming questions that you will come across. I will see you again in the next video. Till then, happy learning.